Hello, hello, and welcome to The Zero Plane, an original Starfinder podcast uh, by yours truly, Bowen North. It is an original um, story and my very first GMing experience, so I'm a little bit nervous. Anyway, uh, I'll be playing with some of my best friends, uh, Andrew North, I know, he's my cousin, uh, Austin Routon, and Ross McKenzie. Just a great group of guys, there's only four of us total, but... I've, we've played games throughout the years, and I happen to have the right equipment, and quarantine kind of happened, so we figured, hey, let's do a podcast. So, enjoy the very first episode of The Zero Plane. This is a story of life and death, though one might argue that kind of thing is the maximum amount of complexity from a group of mammals almost genetically identical to a mushroom. However... The interest best served for your imagination questionably sound mind is the where of the story. Arguably the most controversial of the W's. For instance, do you care if a knight slays a dragon in a ruined castle for the lady's favor? Or do you care if a knight slays a dragon in a public bathroom in New York City? You get the point. I'll move on. This particular story begins on the outermost edge of the outermost galaxy in the outermost solar system on the very edge of a planet on the dark side of the furthest moon called Panquake. Suffice to say, our heroes exist on the expanding part of the expanding universe, so much so that the stars only occupy the night sky for half the night. I'll let you research that bit. There's something to be said about being first. First to come, first to go, first in a race, first to get a contagious disease that creates a pandemic and turns the whole year into so many nail clippings in your new genes. The moon, Panquake, is dangerously close to many ripples of the drift. What does that mean, you might say? It means that anything that can exist does exist. It means that the pleasant dream you had may find a home on or near this moon, also your nightmares. It means that whatever you believe, if you believe strong enough and long enough, it will manifest and become reality. That means evils can wreak havoc, gods can get a minimum wage job, and long-lost fathers who went out to get some milk find their way home. What kind of place is that where all of imagination and absurdity exist you might ponder to yourself? It is simply this, the Zero Plane. So that's the world you're in. That is the theme. For the introduction of this, Ross, Austin, you both took a taxi to the same place, happened to take it at the same time, and this is a mandatory event that you, it is absolutely compulsory. It's a talent show. So even if you haven't come up with the talent you want to perform in front of the man, you must go and perform. It doesn't matter what it is. So everyone is making the pilgrimage to go to this holiday. And Question. You, go ahead. If let's say my talent was sharpshooting, I'm not allowed to have a gun. Would they provide me a gun? You are absolutely allowed to have a gun. I don't know if you're going to have to defend yourself. Are you kidding? Oh, I thought you said we weren't allowed to have a weapon. <laughs> you do not have a weapon yet because you haven't bought one. <laughs> Uh, okay, fair. So, okay. the further we get into this, the more sense it will make. Okay. So, currently, you're just going from home. You have a 9 to 5 job or whatever your background is. This particular day, the day of uh mind pictures is what this holiday is called. Education isn't this world's strong suit. All right. So, I see I see the vest across from me. I'm like, "Stay green, brother." <laughs> <laughs> Stay cold, brother. <laughs> Do you enjoy the sun? It's just messed with me. <laughs> Sometimes oh, I just bask in it. <laughs> oh, 
I wish at the sun. <laughs> Please don't spend right. the game laying down <laughs> on the asphalt. <laughs> just like, uh, just soak up some rays. All right, so we take, get out of the taxi, and we're so we're waiting. What and then what? Well, if you go this way, um, I don't know where Andrew is or what he's doing, so. He's just off over there. If you guys, I I can't see you. Oh, well then, Andrew, what are you doing? Uh, I'm doing my best to walk in out of the sunset, and if there's no sunset to walk out of, I just pretend it's there. Um, you might need to pretend. Well, that's all right. I won't roll for it or anything. <laughs> all right <clears throat> i gotta get in my um i ever since i've been listening to adventure zone i feel like i gotta have a character voice <laughs> so i i'm a frog so i'm gonna try to go really deep like show us what you got hey you see that guy coming out of the sunset <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. i am a fan <laughs> I'm just a lonely frog. Uh, let's hear you say ribbit. That's a racist to us. It's <laughs> <laughs> a fucked up moan. <laughs> Sorry, I meant blurb, blurb, blurb. <laughs> anyway, I gesture over to the android making his dramatic entrance <laughs> of the sunset. Um, maybe that's his talent, I'm going to assume. <laughs> that's walking out of sunsets. So that's exactly what they took profession sunsets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andrew, you just stay in there? No, no, I'm, I'm walking. I just, you know, wasn't, wasn't sure on the time here. I'll just, I guess I'll just scooch myself over as they talk. Yeah. As far as movement goes, it's kind of a little free form until we actually get into combat. Sure. This visual aid just so helps. Did we, did we establish we know each other? I was facing out. Nobody knows each other. You're all just going to the same event. You are being forced against your will, or maybe you don't care, to go to this event. Otherwise, you will be arrested, <laughs> conscripted, and join the army, like, by force. Gotcha. So right now, okay. you are simply at an... at. Your current location is a parking lot at an outpost in order to get on the bus. That's the only way to travel between cities and outposts. Public transportation is also mandatory on this planet. Okay. It's mandatory. Okay. It is absolutely <laughs> mandatory. You cannot go outside the walls in a vehicle unless it's a bus. This planet sucks. <laughs> Wait until you hear about the political system. <laughs> All right, you guys just chilling by the taxi? Yeah, um, I guess I will say, like, hey, like... Uh, All right, taxi's leaving. I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty new to this whole, like, thing, I guess. You know, I got my tan pants. <laughs> like, I'm going to go on over. Uh, you guys want to hang it with me? <laughs> Hello, I'm Gusty Adams. Hi, Dusty. I'm I'm Ghoul Dan. You can call me Ghoul. I had a pet frog once, and I <laughs> liked him dearly. Well, damn decent of you. Anyway, that's my piece. Excuse me, gentlemen. <laughs> Do you happen to know where the number 10 bus picks us up? I'm, I'm new to this bus system. Well, you gotta... Are you you're looking to leave? I think we're supposed to go inside or we're gonna get, like, you know, forced to be soldiers or something. In the distance, <laughs> in the distance you hear, Attention! Did I say, or hey, did I hear you say number 10 bus? And you see this robot run, sprinting over vehicles to you. His oh name is God. Tominator. Tominator, hi. Good evening, Holy everyone. Shit. Did I hear you say the number 10 bus? 
Hello, Tom. I'm Gusty Adams. Hello, <laughs> yeah, Gusty Adams. Just... <laughs> Good evening. Yeah. Or more. Actually, my <clears throat> eyes don't work really very well. So I just have my thermals on. What time of day is it? 10 o'clock. It's. Thank you for a true and honest answer. <laughs> the number 10 bus. Who asked that question? Gusty uh, Adams, do you know the answer to my question? I hide behind. <laughs> I hide behind. Never mind. <laughs> I hide behind the bigger people. I'm gonna just like hide behind the vest. <laughs> um, that 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 was me who was asking about the number ten bus. Good morning, and who are you who asked about the number ten bus? Uh, my name's Elgar. And, um, Elgar. I may have been mistaken. Nice Maybe I don't actually you. need the number 10. Pleasant to make Thank your you. acquaintance, <laughs> Elgar. The number 10 bus, I have that answer. Follow me if you want to know more about the number 10 bus. And he walks away. And he just keeps walking. Um, where does the number 10 bus go? He's... <laughs> <laughs> it could go anywhere. It's going wow. rogue already. All you know is you have to take the bus to go to the event. Okay, so we got okay. So I guess, uh, well, you heard the- Yeah, you fools better come with me. You heard the robot that hasn't <laughs> been just... updated in 700 years of firmware. <laughs> <laughs> He's just full of viruses. <laughs> yeah, <it> seems... <laughs> Let's go actually... follow the malware. He actually shuts down <laughs> over here right. next to the wall. I guess I'll opt to follow him, yeah. Yeah, I'm just moving along there. So in this area, does it, does anyone like look around or are you just following this robot until he stops? Yeah, working? like uh <laughs> do, you want me to do a perception or something? Well no, or, I mean so there's Yeah, what's what's going on? So, <laughs> <I'll be following laughs> yeah. Immediately after you go up the stairs, you realize it's taking you through kind of like a gift shop market because it's funneling you like Ikea, like you have no options but to go forward. Oh God, oh God. <laughs> to okay. the bus. So <laughs> right off the bat, <laughs> there's, right off the bat, there's uh, Borcat the meat bat. Uh, he's, are there meatballs? Yes, is there a food court? I mean, like, there's always... He sells food, or you could talk to him and find out, or you can go further along uh, you've got free reign of the map, but like there's weapon dealers, there's armor dealers, there's random people, um, pretty much anyone you can think of, but where do you guys just, uh, let me know where you want to go or what you're doing at this place. I look around if there's any food court cause I, my, well, that's Borcat the meat bat. Okay. <laughs> I guess I go talk to Borcat. All right. Hey, Bor what you got, Borcat? <laughs> Hello, my friend. What is uh, your name? Yeah. You just come talking to me. What am I supposed to do with that? I sell the meat. <laughs> what more would you like? It's daytime. I'm very upset. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I ask him what kind of meatballs he has if this is a space Ikea. We have extremely mild meatballs because I scrape them from the fish, I form them in my hand, and I spit on it. Then I hand I it to you and you give me credits. I decide to pass and go with the rest of my crew. <laughs> yeah, you're just like everyone else. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you can... Uh, I gotta accept that. <laughs> up ahead, I mean, you wanted meatballs in a place that doesn't traditionally have meatballs, but... Up ahead, you see uh, a lot of weapons on a table and a robot standing next to all those weapons. The robot's name is 665 and a half. Is that written as decimals or? That's or... actually 665 and a half, but he felt people might not like that number. But he also doesn't really feel, so he didn't care. He just kept it as 665 and a half. What's with the weapons, I ask? What's with the weapons? Sweet. Good evening. Are you a frog? 
Well, we prefer Gripply, but if you have to be derogative, sure. I'm a fraud. My apologies, you are very slimy looking. It is not my fault. Anyway, I have weapons. Would you like to see them? You know, maybe you're just dry looking, all right? Like, uh, sure. Like, uh, uh, what does he got? This is a yes or no uh, question. Yes. Uh, okay. So what he has <laughs> <laughs> for the weapons, um, he's got a plasma claw. So pretty much a plasma pistol, uh, a bullet pistol, and an electric pistol. Hmm. What, what do they cost? 250 credits each. 250. Now, he also has... um, Mm. That's his pistols. He's got a plasma long arm and a uh, electric long arm and a shotgun long arm. Well, it's a scatter gun. But he also has... What's what's the long arm? Like, like it... Long arms are just rifles. Oh, okay. It just but like it's longer range than a normal shotgun, or yeah. So for some reason, scatter guns are lumped into long arms because they don't actually have shotguns. But the shotgun oh, yeah. itself is only fifteen feet, but it's a fifteen foot cone. Okay, and it hits everything. Um, but you have to be proficient with long arms, which I don't know if any of your classes are. Well, uh, I guess I'll buy it was one of the electric pistol. Are you done, or would you like to hear the rest of this list? Do you have a rifle? He actually yes, reaches He reaches behind <laughs> with his suction cup, because he doesn't have hands. He doesn't have yeah. articulating fingers. He just has suction cups. And he pulls out a sniper rifle. This is a coil rifle. It's 390 credits. Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> All right, you purchased this. So how much? What? what Three hundred ninety. Yeah, three hundred ninety. Okay. Anyone else want to buy something? Uh, six I would six like five. To buy something. Six six five and a half. Looks at you like only one per customer. And he puts his suction <laughs> cups near you, and in in your face, and he just goes. <laughs> and then he looks at you with his big single weird eye because he's a robot. And then he turns around and he pulls out, because he sees what you are, he pulls out a Solarian crystal. Hmm. Mr. 665.5. Yes. What, What have you there? This is a Solarian crystal. You are a Solarian. Thus, you will buy this. Well, that's racist. What makes you think I'll buy this? I assume what I assume based on pure fact. What type of crystal is that? There are many Solarian crystals. This particular type of crystal is as follows. Um, um. Warning, I cannot remember. You must give me at least one minute of your Earth. Well, that doesn't really make sense. (laughs) Of your Earth? normal minutes. <laughs> <laughs> he starts vibrating and some electricity shoots out. This robot's having a nervous breakdown. I don't know what's... All the robots are having a bad day. I was say, it's like, not used to questions and shit. <laughs> I'll give you one unit of time. All you hear is... <laughs> Oh, he broke the vendor. <laughs> One weapon crystal, please. All of a sudden, he snaps to and he goes, Okay, I have completed this task. I have found <laughs> that this is actually the electron crystal shard. Would you like to know what it does? Yes, do tell. It's been a while since I've... Uh, did... <laughs> no, do tell me, please. So he tells you, and I'm not going to do the voice because it gets too ridiculous at the moment. At, <laughs> at the moment, uh, this shard is 280 credits. It does plus one electrical damage on your Solarian bullcrap, like your laser gauntlet. But it has a special effect, Stun. Stun can actually be enhanced to do non-lethal damage. Wow, that does sound good. Excellent. I'll take it. Thank you for your purchase. 
Who is next? Hello, robot. I'm Gusty Adams. Who said that? Sorry. It's my eyes. They don't work anymore. I can These damn robots are and their <laughs> eyes not working. I could fix that for you if you like. Allow me to replace my eye. His eye simply explodes. It, it <laughs> It's just gone. And so one of his suction cups picks up a old, like, tape cam recorder, and it plugs in some wires, so it's literally holding an old camcorder to your face. Much better! How may I help you? Is there something you wish? I'm a little bit out of my depth with this one, but... I think you have a pistol for me. I have many pistols, here they are! The small... <laughs> The small arms are the a plasma pistol, a bullet pistol, and an electric pistol. That was the uh, bullet pistol there. Should do fine. The bullet pistol is a semi-auto pistol, tactical. Um, its price is 260, and it does 1d6 damage. Uh, 30-foot range, and you can shoot 9 bullets without having to reload. In this game, I'm not going to have you guys worry too much about real or uh, ammunition as much as reloading because reloading takes um as much as a full round so that's the only time so if you have this big big gun and you shoot it sometimes sometimes it takes a full round so for the balance of the game i'm just going to worry about how many times you can shoot it and then reload because ultimately you have a lot of ammunition unless you have a rocket launcher then i'm going to factor in the ammunition into your weight because you can't walk around like 200 rockets. You're like, oh, I'm just going to shoot that and shoot this and shoot that. You can't yet. As correct as you are, I'm moving forward. Thank you for your patronage. I must, oh my God, repair myself. Good grief. And the robot turns around and he starts working on himself. All right. Be seeing you, weirdo. So he's busy Getting himself, you see the Tominator, he actually comes back to life. He doesn't say anything to you because he's embarrassed, but he goes walking to the bus. Clank, 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 clank. You just hear all the clanks in the distance. Well, gentlemen, I'm going to I'm gonna keep heading towards the bus. You can stay here with this weird robot if you oh, want. God. I must stay. <laughs> Tominator actually powers down <laughs> later or further ahead. He is powered down again. I'm going for the bus. All right. Uh, You see a really just giant man sitting on a bench on that bridge you just crossed. Um, He's actually a dentist on leave, and dentists are what the the man of the the planet uses as his own personal guard. They are (laughs) giant, giant people. And they have some of the biggest, heaviest, most terrifying weapons imaginable. So whenever you see a dentist, just know you got to be on, be on guard because they are not the most sane individuals. Uh, to your left there, there's Dr. Worm with an unfortunate vaxxer. Um, you can get some medical supplies, some healing bits from him. Uh, there's also, right in front of you, there's a perplexed human, because someone cut down a bunch of trees and moved them onto this absolutely treeless outpost. Does anyone go to see Dr. Worm? Sure. <laughs> Why not? I approach the human. Okay, so we have the perplexed human. Do you say anything to him, Austin? You there, humanoid. Why do you look so perplexed? Well, have you seen the trees? They're not even native to this place. Like, they had to bring them from a really far area. Why are they here? And he just trails off and turns his back to you and just looks at this tree. And he stops moving. Humans are adorable, aren't they? I say to the best. Uh, (laughs) That conversation was enriching. (laughs) He just looks at you. He's like, how did they get here? And he turns back to the tree. (laughs) Well, I don't know who taught you conversation skills, but I go check out Dr. Worm over here. (laughs) All right, who walks up to Dr. Worm? Oh, I'll go on in. All right, do you all approach him at the same time? 
All right, as soon as all of you walk in, everybody make a reflex save. Oh, fuck yeah, I was born for this. Wow, my re reflex was lame. All right. Oh, you guys are fucking in trouble. I am rolling very good. Okay, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I oh. don't have any modifiers for that. Well, Gus Gusty too. He got like fucking 22. Everyone but Gusty oh, yeah. <laughs> gets hit with a health potion. So, right. so when you walk <laughs> in, temporary hit points or whatever. Yeah, you gain. Uh, you gain. Um, hang on, let me roll here. Oh shit! Both of you gain eight temporary health points because what he was doing was carrying a tray of a bunch of these syringes to the unfortunate vaxxer <laughs> or his patient, and the patient freaked out and hit the tray. And because it's experimental, he wasn't sure if it was going to be a good thing or a bad thing. I rolled some stuff, and they're both good things. And then both syringes fly into both of you, giving you eight health or eight more health points uh, temporary. And usually those last like about an hour. Um, awesome, because I only have like seven hit points. So I'm like really <laughs> feeling like very You guys feel like, really like... good. <laughs> and as soon as it happens, Doctor's like, oh, 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 geez, I'm sorry. Um, and he picks him up. He's like, sorry, I'm, I'm Dr. Worm. Good morning. How are you? I like to play the drums. Hello, drums. I'm Gusty Adams. Sorry, Dr. Worm. Gusty, hi, hi. Goodness gracious. Wait, you didn't get hit. Okay. I Who feel did get hit? great. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, God, uh. I feel like twice the frog I am right now. <laughs> oh, uh, I feel multiplied. Please don't sue me sue you i want to screw you and i like walk up to him and start hugging his leg because i'm feeling great I'm like on ecstasy <laughs> and you're, you're two feet tall so yes. <laughs> dr worm is literally a a worm species inside of um kind of a mechanical body so when you look so at hugging his mechanic yeah you're hugging yeah. his mechanical body when you see his face it's it's a normal face, but you can see on the sides it's kind of glass, and you see just a little worm wrapped around some like little tiny um, controls, but designed <laughs> for a worm. <laughs> so you see this mo worm moving around quite a bit just to move this thing. It's like, oh gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, well, if you feel that good, I guess it's on the house. Are you guys cool with that? That's cool, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Good all around. Got me sold. Um, I do have. Can a... we like sign up to be patients of yours more regularly? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> this um, is feeling pretty good. Yeah, he like signs you up. He's like, uh, when do you want to come in? I've got an appointment open five days from now. Um, what time? Does he have any other syringes on his? Uh, no, he gathered like, them train. all. He gathered them all up and kept them away from you because he. Believe it or not, this is not the first time this has happened. <laughs> this is me oh, trying God. to pocket one. <laughs> Zero defeat in 30 seconds. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, I guess roll, roll a perception. Like if I could? Okay. Yeah. Ah, oh, you smarts. We'll keep that sleight of hand. Austin, did you roll a perception? Uh, I did, yeah. All right, well, Ross doesn't see it. But underneath where Austin is, is another one of those syringes. Is that the one that missed me? That is the one that missed you. Because he picked up the ones that fell on the floor. I lean over and I whisper, Hey, Google, there's one, one right down there. I'm too, I'm too big, I can't bend down to pick it up without him noticing, but, but you should go pick it up. Oh, he doesn't notice I'll you talking. It. <laughs> we'll, we'll split it later. All right, and then with my sleight of hand, natural twenty, right here, without like him noticing, assuming this is a success. Yeah, yeah, uh, I have to give that twenty uh, to you. Uh, I, <laughs> you have, but it's, it's just like it's like it's just my my frog tongue just shoots out and grabs it. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, just be like you know, it's just like a blink. <laughs> like I also, you know, then my mouth is full of like capped syringe at the moment. <laughs> hey, we're splitting that. Remember uh, when you do that, uh, Doctor Worm kind of snaps. He was like, "Whoa, okay, sorry, all my controls went crazy just then." Uh, you guys didn't do anything weird, did you? 
He would never. No. Oh, oh, okay. Mm. <laughs> I say with a mouthful. <laughs> I absolutely trust you guys. Bunch of strangers walking into my little clinic here as I'm stabbing this poor patient. I mean, this very voluntary patient. The patient in the back, mind you, the unfortunate vaxxer, has passed out. And not from you guys. Uh, can I go over and look him over or is the worm in my way? But yeah, just come on, go ahead. If you want to look, it's, it's a body right now. I mean, it's an unconscious person right now. So yeah, I can I just do a check on on this unconscious person really quick? Sure. What? I spit out the syringe. Hang on. <laughs> the... Why are you the sneakiest? So hang on, <laughs> hang on. Before Andrew does his thing, Ross, what did you just do? I was just, I was just, I was just joking to him. Like I'm like taking the syringe out and pocketing it in my tan pants because I had it in my mouth. Well, not only is so, this back what? to you, but you're rolling that, so <laughs> you get it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right. I'll take these gnats. I'm not going to roll any other uh, useful situation. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> so, Andrew, now, what are you doing? Uh, it just. I'm just curious as to why this man has passed out. Can I just, like, look him over medically and see if. So, I you can it? roll a medicine check and see what's happening. Oh, okay. You know. Oh, you barely made that. So it seems as though Dr. Worm injected this unfortunate test subject with the curse of lethargy. <laughs> he had a liquid curse that he was testing out and he wanted to see just how good it was. And you see the guy, the, the Vaxxer, he is awake, but he's just like totally muscles relaxed, just like doesn't know where he is, kind of babbling to himself like you do. So, yeah, that's mm. what happened. And Dr. Worm just looks at you and says, Oh, you know what I did. Hey, don't tell anyone. It's it's important research. Uh, important to whom? To this outpost? Imagine if you can just shoot somebody on the battlefield with a needler. Then they just kind of get slower and fall down, take a nap. Like, you win. No one dies. Win-win, you know? Well, I guess my question is... Then, do you have any more liquid curses that you're selling? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was... <laughs> that was convincing. <laughs> um, can I roll a excuse me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, let Austin talk, and then Andrew do your roll. Excuse me, Dr. Worm. My, uh, my friend here asked you a question, and this is me doing a, an intimidate check. <laughs> I rolled a 12. You did not get it. That is not a thing you get. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I, like, roll to help him? Like, I'm like his toady, kind of literally. Like, yeah! All right. Um, he actually, Dr. Worm... Oh, hang on. Let's go back. Andrew, you wanted to do something. Yeah, there's my sense motive. Oh. I mean, you sense that... Oh, wait. Uh, that's that's actually 13. I forgot to put in my creation modifier. Oh, yeah. So I, guess I mean, I too, so. clearly there's something going on, but you believe that there's no more of this liquid curse at this facility. So, like, you feel like he is telling the truth there. Uh, Ross, what were you saying? Oh, I was wondering if I could help out his intimidate or something. I forget if that's a thing where I can like aid him. All right. Since like, well, he's gonna do a counter, um, bluff. He rolled an eighteen. Now you guys roll to see if you see past his bluff with your sense motive. Uh, except for Andrew, who already did his. All right, you guys believe him. Son of a bitch. <laughs> there are no more. I believe him, but I don't deep down. <laughs> you, so you believe there are more liquid curses, but not at this facility. Sure. All right. Uh, all right. I'm with you, Ghoul. Deep down. Oh. <laughs> all right. Deep down. I just got a sense. As soon as Ross kind of bumps into that table, a door opens up and. <laughs> 
<laughs> right in front of him, and two vials fall down. It's just liquid. What do you do? The Dr. Worm did not see that. Pardon me, Worm, and I'm just going to try and get him to face me. That's you. <laughs> yeah, no, he's... Dr. Worm... Dr. Worm is talking... <laughs> With just, oh man, so yeah, yeah that I mean, that gets it. Just distracting him with my filthy banter. All right, I add these to my pants, I guess. Oh man, <laughs> this is gonna be pants interesting. Are absolutely bulging. All right, are your pants just like bulging with needles at this point. So now, Doctor was like, "Okay, guys, thanks for You've coming. I do have this body to watch after. I think is what I'm doing." That's that's believable, right? It is to me. Um. Oh, I forgot. Do you guys want to buy some stuff? I've got stuff for sale. You know, that isn't airborne at you. All the stuff that isn't flying is is for for sale. You know. You want to buy some? Um. <laughs> I mean, what 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 do, do you have for sale? Okay, it's it's really just Mark One serum, uh, Mark One serum of healing and a basic med kit. That sounds useful. I mean, mm. do you just want to get that stuff? So the med kit's 100 per person, if you want, and the, the Mark I healing serum is uh, is 50 each. It does 1d8, restore your health, because that's how I talk. I'm a doctor. I'm Dr. Worm. <laughs> All right. I will buy both. All right. I'll buy one of each as well, please. Doesn't sound like something I will regret. So, and and out of the game, uh, med kits are really important. They can help you, especially if you guys don't have a healer. If you guys start to die, you can use it to help or keep them from dying. Right, I figured it was like a stabilize yeah. or something. It'll stabilize you as a full round action thing, but you have to meet the prerequisite. All right, so Austin, Andrew, do you buy any of the stuff? Uh, yeah, if he's got stuff left, I, I okay. definitely pick up a med pack. Okay, how many? Um, so you each have a med pack. How many, Ross? Um, how many health potions do you, or how many healing serums do you get? I'll take three, I guess. All right, that will be 150 off your docket. And so you just spent 250. So uh, 1,000. Okay, great. Austin, how many health serums do you get in? I'd like two serums and one med kit, All right, please. 200. It's a basic med kit because there is an advanced med kit. And Andrew, what do you got? Uh, just the one. All right, so now Dr. Worm is, like, literally just shooing you out. Okay, thanks, guys. Bye. Just please go. I enjoyed your time. It's very hard moving all these levers. I'm a little worm in a big body. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so we move on. All right, you see, down the hall, past the perplexed human, um, there's a, an armor vendor and some politicians um, up ahead. Now, the politicians are actually homeless men, striving their best to be the worst person because this is a cacristocracy and the least qualified person is the only person qualified to become the president or the man Great. that's <laughs> slowly explaining a few things isn't it i was wondering why dentists were like evil guard bounty hunters or whatever okay <laughs> well they're called dentists because they clean up the streets okay why not janitors? Well, janitors janitors are not that specific. <laughs> that only makes sense if the streets are teeth. <laughs> are the streets um, teeth? So there's an armor there's an armor dispenser. Uh is actually named Leggy the armor dispenser, and he is also a robot. All right, Leggy, I want some light armor. Oh, would you like some light armor, would you? Do you have any credits? Mm -hmm. 
Goodness I got grief, some what is the sun doing? It's like very dark. Why is it so dark today? It's actually... I slapped, I slapped the fucking robot for rambling about the sun. I'm waiting for my armor. His head flies off. <laughs> oh, shit. I didn't even roll. No, his head... A, I have minus one strength. Maybe I healed him. <laughs> his head flies off because it was just a pail. It was just a garbage pail sitting on the top of his head. This okay. robot doesn't have a head but he feels self-conscious so he has a couple more buckets to his left he get, picks one and he puts another bucket up top and he paints with little little white paint streaks <laughs> two eyes and a smile it's like terribly sorry for being decapitated all of a sudden that was very strange may I get you some armor you wanted light armor I did alright the light armor <laughs> options as follows and there's just one of each for these um, it's just a Estex suit mark one it's uh, 410 credits, uh, and it gives zero to your EAC, but plus one to your KAC, and has a maximum dex bonus of plus five. And its armor check penalty is minus one. But it has two upgrade slots. Well, I'll just go with that. How much was it? Yeah, that's um, 410. Now, okay. there are upgrades. You can get descent thrusters or a um, quick-release sheath. Now, the quick-release sheath... You can have a weapon, like a, a pistol, kind of like in your arm, and you can, as a swift action, pull it out. So it doesn't take it doesn't take a movement action to take out your gun. You just kind of do it. And the descent thrusters, that if you fall, you can actually fall um, 60 feet without getting hurt. I'll take the thrusters. Uh, I'm going to be AFK, so okay. I'll be right back. Yep. Does anyone else want to buy anything? While he's buying stuff, I'm gonna take the bucket off of his head and draw eyebrows on it. Where like one is straight and the other is heavily arched, just to make it look like he's giving it everyone a very intense look. Oh man! So because it's not his real head, he doesn't notice. So he's still bartering with Ross. Right, very intensely. <laughs> he does not notice. Um, are you guys gonna buy anything? Would you please tell me about the armor? Okay, well then you, I uh, assume, are going to buy the light armor for 410. Yes. Do you want to get the thrusters as well, or the the quick-release sheath? I'll go with the descent thrusters. I like the sound of that. Excellent. Those are 800. So 800? Yeah. I think you're, you're approaching your limit, but I think you're good. How much should we start with? 2,000. Oh, jeez! Pleasure doing business with you. What's going on with my head? Oh, it's okay. Don't mind it, none. Hello, lady. I'm Gusty Adams. Uh, one of the politicians walks up like, Hey, that's a really good thing on your head. And he takes off your work of art and removes the head from the robot, puts it on his own head. He's like, Hey, look, I'm closer to being the man. And he starts hitting his head with a stick. Then he runs off. Hmm. Well, that's it's not people. what I planned. So then Leggy, the armor dispenser, takes another pail, puts on his head. Oh, sorry about that. I was decapitated once more. How may I help you? Uh, yeah, I wanted to, uh, get one of those upgrades. What was it called? The, the quick release. Um, Are you getting the light armor? Because the quick release is an upgrade for the armor itself. Yeah, I'm, I'm an android. I have a light armor upgrade, just like Oh, slot naturally in my body. Are you going with no armor then? Uh, I haven't decided yet, but I definitely want to be up this upgrade to just be like that's awesome. Integral, like part of my body. Yeah, um, you got it. We're almost to the bus, guys. He doesn't have uh, clothes in there, does he? He just looks at you and says, "Why on earth would I ever have fabrics? Are you mad? Lasers go straight through those." Just a thought. Uh, I'm just a loony thought. Up. Are you a loony? Jeez. Well, you don't need to be rude. This guy's crazy over here. As his bucket tumbles a little bit when he talks. <clears throat> I'm going to pick up his new bucket, and then I'm just going to draw an intense frowny face on it with the same eyebrows. Intense frowny. put it back on his body. Sir, I guess our business here is done then, but I'm stuck here. You are a pretty man. And I can't move. And I'm just going to walk away. I'm attached to this dispensary, so this is my life. I am running out of buckets. 
uh, as I walk down the hall, I'm going to call back. I'll bring you more. Goodness. Uh, well, until Ross comes back, uh, you guys have any questions, any concerns? Do you want to talk to anybody while he's gone? Um, uh, I mean, I did want to try and find some kind of a general store or a store that sells general things. Oh, store that sells general things. Kind of like um, fire extinguishers, something like that. Uh, yeah, that could be one of the things they sell. Actually, right in when you first came in, Borcat the Meat Bat had a lot of general wares on the table, but he was accosted, and so he just kept talking about meatballs, and he wouldn't shut up about meatballs because he was... You know, he has a temper, so he really started fixating on that. So if you guys go talk to him again and simply ask for the wares, you know, they're right there. Like, you remember seeing them. Do you guys go and <laughs> talk to yeah, Borkat the Meat Bat? Whose voice I can't remember, even though it was like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> it was kind of scary at casting. All right, who talks to him? Like... Hello, Meatball. I'm Gusty Adams. Ah, you called the Meatball? No! God! I can't... You two? All right, I take the fish, I scrape the meat off, I roll in my hand, and then we're done. You take your Meatball, I spit on it, then you pay me money. Jesus, people. Hello, Fishball. I was wondering if you had <laughs> shirts. What What kind of shirt you want? You want a meat shirt? I had a... Uh, well, now that you say that, I am going to give it some thought. Um, no, I was thinking the, the sort of specific kind, uh, do, do you have any in the rancher style with the sort of frills along the shoulders and the black cloth? He doesn't notice that you don't actually have your tan pants. Uh, oh, right, I forgot that I... <laughs> yeah, that's... I mean, you're not wearing them, and he doesn't have them for sale, so this is gonna get interesting. Um... Your mandatory tan pants, and you just don't have them. He says, yeah, we got the, the frills with the, oh, whatever the hell you just asked for. He lifts up a bunch of meat, and what the meat has been sitting on are shirts. And he kind of, like, takes one out, and he rings it out just in front of you guys, like, here's your, here's your shirt, only 15 credits. Because now the meat so has nothing a, to soak anymore. So it's a meaty shirt. It smells... It of meats, plural. You don't know what kind of meat, but meats. All right, yeah, I'll take that. Well, I'm, I'm gonna unfold it really quick and, and look at it. Yeah, because it's it just like, it's just this really wrinkled thing that's damp with meat juice. Mm. Okay, we're done, you got your meat shirt, now you pay me and then you leave. You just get out of here, God. This is the daytime. I'm very upset. Is this guy based on the King of the Hill character? I don't know, because I can't remember. The racetrack. Wait, I don't remember those episodes. <laughs> the one with Bobby's first job, and he was working with, like, a mentally challenged... Oh, dude. that guy. No, that guy was, like... Yeah. That guy was... He wasn't as articulate. But I get, I get oh, where sorry. the the voice is similar only when he's angry. <laughs> no, that guy, right. that guy slurred a bunch of words. I'm not even gonna try because it's gonna end up ruining my Borcat voice. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll take the shirt. It is at least black, though, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Leave me to my meats, please. <laughs> hey, <laughs> giant lizard! What do you want? Um. Do you have any? Do you have any thing that would fit me? Uh, Borcat takes out a umbrella, and then he stands up, and he looks up, and he then unfastens one of the giant sheets on the uh, covering the meats. He's like, "Yeah, you're really big, so uh, here." And he just rips it down and throws all the fabric to you. It's like, that's big enough for a shirt. That's that's five credits. Mm. So he pretty much just threw you a poncho. I'll take it. Five credits? Yeah, five. What are you doing the accent for? <laughs> all right, this is me. What are you? 
I'm me. What are you? This is weird. He just takes your money, sits down, and he just starts reading a book. You, sir, need to calm down, but I'll take your sailcloth. He is absolutely <laughs> ignoring you. I'm going to put on my black shirt and, and present myself to the wizard and, and ask, does this shirt make me smell more human? Both of you guys roll a reflex check. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's just roll a two for reflex here. That's a whammy. So as you guys are starting to talk, both of you take, um, oh God. That's the phrase I wanted to hear. Two, two non-lethal damage from a big ass fish that hit both of you. He hit us with a fish? He threw a fish at both of you, yes. For two non-lethal damage. Ah! <laughs> so what you're saying is he just gave us three fish. What I'm saying is roll initiative. <laughs> okay. Okay, Austin, you go first. You guys are having a good old-fashioned brawl now. Okay. Wow. Um. I guess I'm gonna pick up the fish and and like hit him with it. How does that work? <laughs> All right. You are ten feet. You're ten feet away from him. So all the fish is, it's plus zero, uh, and it's 1d4 damage, non-lethal. So it's not very good. Like, it's as good as a weak pistol, but up close. What about a fish with a crystal sticking in it? <laughs> You're not gonna laser the fish and hit him with the fish in addition to the laser... That's not how this works. Are you denying I'm not him the opportunity to make a laser fish bone? <laughs> yes, because he has to craft it first. I thought this world was all about <laughs> laser fish bone. I thought it is. That, that can't exist <laughs> does. Yeah, you have to make it that way. Now, unless unless the crystal... My return. <laughs> unless the crystal came in the fish, You're you won't be able to start out with a laser fish and slap <laughs> Morkat the meat bat with your laser fish. It just can't happen unless you craft you know it, going? which takes engineering. Are you going to engineer the fish? This is how it happens. Fish plus... Crystal. Ross, we did a thing. We're not so well, you guys <laughs> Now, okay. one thing I will allow is if you put the crystal in the fish's mouth and roll mysticism and get it high enough, then you can attune your Solarian bullcrap to the fish and slash him with the fish non-lethal damage and your laser lethal damage. Does this use up my laser? Crystal. No, your laser's infinite. Okay, it's, my... it's what you do. I'm oh, sorry. Does it use up my crystal? Laura made me lemon cookies for my birthday. They're great. Oh, geez, <laughs> nice. that sounds amazing. Welcome to the fish battle. Roll initiative. <laughs> Just real quick, roll initiative. Uh, Austin, right. this will take up your turn, but you need to roll a, a mysticism check to see if you can... Attu Gosh, darn it. Oh, wait, no. Okay, that was... <laughs> Okay, I'm rolling my, my mysticism. It's a d20. Oh, man, you got it. <laughs> All right. So that that was pretty... Okay, here's your option. That was your movement okay. phase. You can okay. throw the fish as a ranged weapon, and it's pretty much your strength. He's within range. The only downside is you have to go pick up the fish and the crystal after that. Now, okay. there are rules for if you miss, it might go down where all those cars are. Gotcha. Okay. So you're up on a ledge. There's a bunch of cars and traffic that the, the bridge you went over, like they're coming in just because everyone's trying to get to the bus. Gotcha. Uh, so that was your movement phase. <laughs> you can throw it, you crazy person. Um, just give me a straight up. Um, it's your strength. So make a D20 roll plus your strength modifier. 20 plus one? Mm, you get him. God damn it. <laughs> All right, roll 1d4 and a 1d6 plus one. 1d4 coming right up. <laughs> Throwing a goddamn laser fish at this guy. <laughs> so my 1d4 roll is three. 1d6 okay. plus one, you said? Okay. Ah! Oh! <laughs> 
Okay, you get him. He is not dead. But man, is he not happy. As he should be. Oh, is he not happy. So he pretty much gets upset, throws a fish at you. You like ram this crystal in this fish, twirl it around. A laser shoots out of the fish like a freaking lightsaber. And you chuck it like a boomerang, except it sticks in him. So he just goes like, oh, my God. Oh, there's a laser fish in my arm. Oh, the meats. <laughs> What does anyone I, else do? I, I clap. <laughs> that metal. Take that, Mark, that, the fish cat. Like, he is not doing well at all. All right, um, I guess Jeez. I'd shoot him. <laughs> like, finish him off. Uh, I forgot to iterate. Yeah. There is a... Uh, this is why are we doing this? <laughs> yeah, there's there's a dentist right over there. By the way, by the way, Ross, this was unprovoked. Andrew and I just bought stuff, and he threw a fish at us. That's what you missed. <laughs> as soon as the fish was thrown, this dentist was booking it towards you guys. Oh. Do you shoot him? And one fun rule I have that I'm stealing from other GMs is: if you say it, you do it. Ross, this is a freebie, but. If you actually shoot him and kill him, there will be consequences that I've written out. I holster my gun. <laughs> All right, is that your turn? Yeah. Uh, Borcat is not doing okay. Um, now, next was Andrew. You're next. Uh, do I see the dentist heading toward us? Roll a perception check. You. Is it not gone well for me? To I'm only having you roll because there's a fish, there's a laser, there's clapping. There's a lot going on. And the dentist is like still 30, 40 feet away from you. That you do not sure. notice the dentist. All right. Well, I guess I'll just, just do this with meatball. Then. I mean, you still have your meat um, shirt. Yes, I'm keeping that off. Are you, that's my mouth. But you actually are wearing the meat shirt? Oh, 100%. Okay, that's real gross, but awesome. Um, I Can I attempt like an, an intimidate, basically? And, to Borcat? Uh, Borcat is on the ground screaming because there's a laser fish in his arm. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm just going to tell him there's more fish where that came from, meat man. And he's laying down like, who the hell <laughs> throws a laser fish at so many guys? Ah, oh, jeez, ah! And he's really, he's he's not doing well because it's, you know, it's it's bright out and he's a bat. So his eyes are closed right. and his face is all scrunched up in discomfort. Oh, wait, does he look like he's in immediate danger of like passing out or something? He's not doing well. There's a laser right, fish in, in his I arm. Pick up the other fish and I just hold it up and, and ready in action for him to stand back up. Oh, geez. Now, non lethal damage doesn't kill people, it knocks them unconscious. So you're ready in action with the fish because you don't see that dentist. Um, everyone roll new initiatives, please, because this is getting crazy. Yep, the dentist goes first. Listen here, virtually nice. <laughs> All of you rolled so bad. <laughs> so, so bad. <laughs> All right. The dentist runs straight up to you, not even breaking a sweat. The dentist is attempting to grapple two of you. Um, <laughs> God, these guys are not fun. I'm confused. Is this part of the talent show? <laughs> All right. Does 39 get it? I was promised talent. So he has Andrew and Ross in his hands. <laughs> what? I didn't even shoot. I... <laughs> Hello, I'm Gusty Adams. And that was his turn. He does not say anything. He does not look at you. He is staring down um, as a free action. Austin. Can I intimidate him back? Uh, sure, we'll do a clash of intimidates. We'll see yes. who's scarier. The guy holding two people like the ragdolls? That's <laughs> actually... <laughs> oh, man. How tall is he? Oh, he's he's like six foot five. He's just a, a big human. But he's holding your friends like they're nothing. 
Yeah. And he is We're in just... some kind of armor. You're not quite sure what, but it's it's not bulky. It's pretty sleek. It's almost like he exited out of bigger armor, some would might say. Gotcha. Well, just, just for reference, I'm seven foot tall, and I, I just decided now as my solar manifestation to manifest my solar weapon, which is a glowing energy thing around my fist that looks like uh, like a what, rock and sock and bopper, like a rock and bopper. Are you going to attack the dentist who's on leave and is just trying to relax after months of murdering people? Well, I'm intimidating him. Well, counter his intimidation roll. I'm just setting the stage <laughs> for my intimidating. Okay. He's not even looking at anyone else. He's staring up at you, and he's making you feel a little small. Good. And you are intimidated because a 15 doesn't beat a 20. Like, for a split second, he's like, man, this guy's pretty tall. But then you realize it's like dealing with a honey badger, and you're best just to leave it alone. Damn. All he says is, what? are you doing on my day off? Who answers him? Sir, you've come here just in time to arrest this shopkeeper here who is vicious <laughs> over us. I know it's true. That's the truth. I know it's true, but please, please, please roll a bluff check to add to it. Um, add a plus two to it because it was true. All right. So whatever you uh, roll with all your bonuses, add two to it. Borcat's still screaming in the corner because there's a laser fish in him. Okay, so you got 18. And with that, he simply sets you guys down. Doesn't say anything. He goes over and he picks up Borcat, the meat bat, who's screaming. Um, He picks him up, takes the laser sword out, looks at the laser sword, and he simply looks over at the group and he says, Who's? Did you say who? Yeah, just who. Oh, I thought you said who. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just going, <laughs> hang on, he just goes, ooh, that that <laughs> looks painful. <laughs> no, he, he's asking, like, whose is this? Uh, that, that, that was an improvisation that we made in self-defense, sir. He takes out the crystal and takes the fish and takes Borcat. Uh, he tosses the crystal just vaguely at you guys, takes a bite out of the fish, and escorts Borcat <laughs> away. This planet's fucking bizarre, man. <laughs> I'm so happy you said that. Oh, God, that was too much stress for just trying to buy some meaty clothes. You wanted the that clothes. Was maybe not worth this shirt. This <laughs> sailcloth poncho? I do like the poncho, though. That was a sweet, sweet way to go. But, all right, well, I think I'm done with, with this particular spot. We interrupt the show to bring you fun facts about Panquake. The dentists are what the man desires as his personal guard, as well as the main soldier of choice for the Inquisition. They are essential for the extraction of drift entities that should not be in normal space. Most are filled with medicinal drugs to improve combat effectiveness and magical aptitude. They wield the best weapons and the strongest armor. As people, they are normal citizens of Panquake, but have undergone such severe training that they remove or mask their personalities during combat. Some stray from the norm, however. These individuals should be avoided as they are unpredictable as they are malicious. Dentists can be discharged by execution of their choice, performed by the man itself. The only way a dentist may end their service and or retire is to sacrifice themselves for the betterment of the cacristocracy. If you ever do get the chance to meet a retired dentist, be wary. There's no telling how one might act after being face to face with death and living to tell the tale. The origins of the name Dentist 
The first demon that manifested in the Decubitus galaxy on the small moon called Panquake was so small that it occupied the cavity of a librarian aspiring to become a politician in the year AG 70. That librarian was Jean Tuckett, and when he went to his dentist about tooth pain, that dentist accidentally killed the demon with a fine drill. Neither person ever knew what had happened, and to this day, the fact that the name dentist is synonymous with murdering death soldier and bite fixer is what you and I would call a dentist is purely coincidence. And now, back to the show. I'm, uh... I'd like to, to pull a perception check on Borkat's stand. Now that he's not lurking over it. And throwing fish at us. Aggressively yelling at us. Um, are you rolling just a, a general a general thing? Just a general perception check on his meat stand, now that he's not like lording over it. And I add my perception there. I look in all the small places as a small frog man would. So you guys, you high, guys are you you're taking time <laughs> to look over this abandoned place, right? I'm just gonna take a couple steps away. Well, when you put it like that, <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. No, no. Like you rolled, you rolled a perception. So you say what you do. You guys start poking around, and all of a sudden, <laughs> these turrets just pop up. They pop up out of the ground. What the hell? They're like. Does anyone, is anyone actually touching? You guys are just looking. Did anyone actually touch the stand? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> they wait a minute. I'll back off slowly. They wait a minute. <laughs> and then one by one, they go back into the ground. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm over it. <laughs> Forget All about right. this guy. Our work is done here. This is a silly what? place. Let's get out of here. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to speed you guys up. You get back through here. You guys <laughs> still have to buy your ticket, guys. <laughs> Here's the doorway. There's still another politician digging through the garbage because the other guy, well, he didn't make friends with the dentist. Anyway, do you guys go through the door into the, the main office of the bus station? All yeah. right. Go ahead and go through it. Uh, there's a fountain. Someone put a fountain there for some reason so as soon as you guys open up the door you're immediately met with water and actually everyone roll a reflex save again it's just dc 10 i rolled i rolled man oh d10 no no it's a dc 10 oh yeah oh thank god yeah you uh fall in you're all wet now wait i rolled in d20 first yeah he, he meant it's a the dc is 10 so Sorry. So your first yeah. one did do it. Okay, you get past the awkward fountain. Ross, what's your roll? Oh no! Oh, you lose him? oh yeah, he's gone. Anyway, uh, Andrew, you made it. Austin, you made it. I'm gonna say Ross being so, amphibious <laughs> makes it. I'm sure he'd pass. So Ross is catching flies over at the the door, which there are abundance because it's next to the, the dumpster. So in the office, you see a human, you see a better human, and then you see Wisconsin Wes, the guy in charge of the bus, the tickets, everything. What do you guys do? I approach the ticket stand. Talk to Wisconsin Wes. Wisconsin Wes just looks, he's like, hey, what brings you to my neck of the woods? Can I get you anything? Well, yes, I, I'd like uh, one ticket. For the number 10 bus, please. Actually, I'll just buy three tickets all at once. All right, perfect. Well, as you know, that's going to be 300 credits. Ooh, actually, <laughs> um... <laughs> old pal Gustio, you want to spot me some change? We'll split the we'll split the fare here. That seems reasonable. Yeah. Wisconsin Wes, yeah. he just looks, he's like, boy, I sure hope you guys didn't spend too much on your way here. That'd be a shame. Hey, Android, my friend, are you buying a ticket as well, or are you part of the one of the three of this guy's posse? Hello, Wes. He's going to set down the, the, the 150 of my chair. All right, we're halfway there, my champs. Wait, I'm only counting two. We're missing somebody. You guys can create uh, 
or just buy the tickets and and get Ross on there, or um, you can wait for him. But right now, Wisconsin West is kind of kind of fidgeting, and and he says like. Mm you know, this is actually a really fast transaction and uh, I'm not really appreciative if things take too long. And he's kind of fidgeting and there's a red button on his chair that he's really itching towards. Uh, would, would I know what this red button does? Roll a um, culture. Because androids are genetically genetically similar to buttons. <laughs> you share a common ancestor. You speak binary. <laughs> so if you know for a fact, if he pushes that button, a few things can happen. They might involve turrets, and it might involve dominoes, or it might involve him just pushing a button that makes a noise. Why is it? I miss. Why is he going for the button? Look, we're this... not good at dealing with people, apparently, Ross. Every time you leave, we. Hey, hey, hey! Who is the newcomer? Oh, now that's the three of the third of the one of three that the three man said. Why don't you guys get your tickets and get the hell out of my office? Excellent. Well, I'll, I'll pony up the rest of it. One fifty. You are correct. Now get the hell out. As we're walking away, I just call back, say, I like your spirit. Wisconsin West just says, <laughs> oh, Wisconsin West does not like that man. <laughs> a fucking disco stew. Disco stew. Hey, don't diss the disco <laughs> stew. <laughs> so you guys walk down the hall. You've got your tickets. Um, what you walk up to is the, the scanning station before you get on the bus to make sure you have all the legal things you're allowed to take on the bus. Um... There's a whole bunch of guards, a whole bunch of people. There's another retired dentist. Um, there's a, a bug-looking creature uh, species sitting out on a chair. His name is Bugby Buggington. There's another human. There's another Vesk. Borcat and the dentist on leave are off in the corner, and you're kind of afraid to look too closely at what's happening over there. Um, there's another guard. He's a better guard. I actually call him Guard 2.0. And then there's an alien that's really upset. You're not quite sure why. If you guys want, you can just go through the, or talk to the guard and he'll let you through the scanner. But uh, that's where you're at. What do you do? I want to talk to the woman. Okay. What do you say to her? Are you waiting for the bus too? I don't know. <laughs> Are you waiting for the bus? I'm intimidated. I don't need to roll for it. Everyone's so rude on this world. I walk off, I walk off and hide behind my best friend. I'm done talking to people. Try talking to someone else. You're choo Every time you choose someone, you're choosing all of the worst people first. So I always assume that the worst person is going to have the most interesting story, the most boring. It's like, what's this, this random woman well, doing here? Also, you walked know. away from her <laughs> after she said one thing to you. But that's fair. That's fair. I, 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 uh, my froggy feelings are hurt. <laughs> that's what happens when you have a porous skin. Uh, so when the woman yells at you, the retired dentist doesn't look at her. All he does is raise his hand and snap. And the snap echoes across the entire place and everyone stops talking. The woman then simply stands right. up, turns around, and looks at the wall. Oh, shit. <laughs> so now it's dead quiet. Then the retired dentist snaps one more time and everyone goes back to what they were doing. Except for the woman. He just stares at the wall. <laughs> and the retired dentist is enjoying, like, some hot cocoa and his own little chair. Very comfortable. Uh, Bugby Buggington... Seems to be fidgeting a little bit, but he's got um, two tickets in his hands. The upset alien is just constantly pressing these buttons on um, the screen that's in front of him. You guys investigate anything? Uh, what do you do? That's a barrage of bizarre details. <laughs> I guess I go right to the source of... <laughs> of the intimidation <laughs> <laughs> probably a good choice um rather than a spazzing alien and bugsy or bugby over in the corner um shit what the fuck do i say to this guy before you say anything is so it's obvious. before he says he's like hey yeah. how may i help you is there anything you need assistance with and he doesn't look at you he just says it loud enough for you to hear you have any advice for this upcoming talent show thing? Uh, yeah, actually. 
do what you're best at. Do what you love. And he sips his cocoa. What's that for you? Making my own chocolate, actually. I'm bringing my own little station. I'm going to be making chocolate for the man. Hopefully I don't get shot this year. It's good to dream. <laughs> okay. um, wait, um, hold on. You seem a little new. And then he turns around. Have you done the talent show before? No. Oh, you're definitely going to want some armor. I thought I had some, some light armor. Yeah. Right, by that. No, you're right. That's your yeah. That is armor. My apologies. I, I'm used to wearing something a bit sturdier than what you're wearing. I feel violated <laughs> by this man. <laughs> I feel judged and violated. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm All sorry. Right. Your skin is so squishy. Well, you know, maybe yours is dry. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna say every time. So anyway, he's like. Maybe you just don't moisturize. Then I lick my own eyeball like Frog does. <laughs> and the dentist just says, Oh, I didn't I didn't mean to offend, sir. But what are you planning on doing for the talent show? I'm making chocolate. What do you do? Uh I thought I would show off my marksmanship. Ooh, that's always a crowd pleaser. Uh do you have anyone in mind you're going to shoot? Uh <laughs> I, I'm going to, and I totally pull out of my ass, going to shoot something off my vest friend. Oh, a team <laughs> effort. No, style. no, you get bonus points. <laughs> Everyone says if there's two targets on the stage, then that's mostly bonus points. So it doesn't matter what the man does. I'm, I'm totally going to roll a one and kill him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and put that into the roster. Uh, okay. And so he then shows you to the screen where you put in your talent roster, which is what that upset alien has been doing. <laughs> so do you guys punch in teamwork um, marksmanship? Oh, was, we just we just going to do this as a group thing or where Ross shoots and then we just get shot. <laughs> is that our talent? So, so far... <laughs> Austin didn't like say anything against it, but this <laughs> dentist is really gung ho about this talent show. I apologize to the vest like immediately. Yeah, it, it, it's like you know, I, I was just swept up in the moment. I was feeling like they want a little little spectacle, and trust me, I'm a pretty good shot. I I'll help you. Go. That's very admirable of, of you. This might be one of those friendship bonding <laughs> moments, so. Or maybe I shoot you in, like, you know, your lizard dick. I don't know. Uh, we'll find out. The dentist, <laughs> we'll the dentist, which is, he's a, a small Yosoki, so he's very small. He's a little rat person. He's a little taller than Ross, mm. the frog person. So he turns to the vest, like, oh, that's mm. very admirable. Usually it's only four out of seven. Mm. <laughs> Survival rate. Oh. And so he's, uh, he opens it up. Uh, do you guys enter together? We got our act. I guess. Okay, so yeah. that's a. F I would like to enter solo as well. Ooh, if is, you're entering twice, is that possible? They can't shoot at you the second time. Okay. Well, my my, I, I may have mis misread the flyer. My talent, <laughs> my talent does not involve shooting. I'm actually illiterate. <laughs> you see, I I I prepared a talent that is non-combative. Oh, that's that'll work just fine. No one has to be combative. But that I'm very proud the of. The only talent they don't allow is simply existing. And the upset alien in the back goes, which is total bullcrap. Oh, he's got a point. <laughs> but you must have a talent. You would be surprised how many people are bad at that. So, okay, we have uh, two people entered. And then what is your talent, Sir Vesk? Well, um, uh, in my in my scholarly studies, I, I've come across some ancient poetry I'd like to read. <laughs> Ooh, those are always fan favorites. But I have some interpretive movement to pair with my poetry. <laughs> All right, I can't say I've ever seen that. <laughs> hey, you've got to change with the times. It's rather moving. I performed it for my master's thesis, and it's rather moving. Does it does it have a name or a title? Do you have something that we can punch this into the roster and just have it easily found? You could call it TTLS. TTLS. Very nice. 
Uh, he punches it in for you. So, mandatory is met. Uh, you, sir, android. Um, ooh, you... S- Hello, I'm Gusty uh, Adams. The, the retired dentist, <laughs> his nose starts going crazy. He's like, my, you smell so interesting. You remind me of a few encounters I had with... Oh, my. Is your shirt absolutely soaked in meat juice? I am... I appreciate that you noticed that about me. It's a very specific aroma. One that brings up bad memories. Um, well, I like to stand out. I'm sorry, I really must go. And he, like, just... He just doesn't change pace, but he just, at the same rate, goes and sits down and pours a little something from a flask into his mug and downs it. All of it. And... That's where he goes. <laughs> uh, so now the guard over there is like, hey, have you gone through the roster? Do you need help? Just if you need help, just tell me. Oh, I mean, I need help in general. Just being in the roster <laughs> mean I, I register my talent with the angry person over here. Sir, who's angry? Well, everyone seems like, but I mean him specifically and I pointed the upset alien who was viciously typing into a computer. Oh no, he's just angry, he doesn't have fingers and he can't get on the roster unless someone helps him. See, he's got claws for hands and it doesn't pick up. There's no electric whatever in the claws. So he just keeps hitting and I keep ignoring him because he can't come through unless he's in the roster. Oh, okay. Yep. I guess I'll put myself in the roster then. Yeah, that'd be great. Then I can let you through. Fine. Uh... (laughs) So, in order to do that, I'm guessing I need to use the computer that the alien is in front of, Oh, right? no, there's another computer down here. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess I'll go for that. Sorry, I was not trying to point you into the one weird encounter that looks very unsettling. <laughs> I mean, that would be fine. Well, what is your talent, then, that you're putting into the roster? <laughs> uh, I'm typing in whistling. I approve. I approve also. So I, I go up and ask them, so your talent is existing and they won't let you uh, enter with that is what my Yes, that's exactly it. Is. I don't know why they won't let me just put my talent as existing. I'm very upset at this and my claws don't work so I can't even enter it, but they wouldn't even let me enter it anyway. I, do you guys have any other suggestions for talents for someone with claws for hands? I do. You could try existing, but backwards. Ooh. You could try existing as the thing I shoot my target off of, and I let my friend. Oh off no, the thanks. I'm not. I'm not getting into that mess. <laughs> I am avoiding that absolutely. No, thank you. Way. Oh boy. No, if you come near me with an apple, I'm gonna claw your face. Okay, I guess I'll just go back to hitting this. Then. <laughs> come on. <laughs> well, that was all our suggestions. Come on, you know, you, you, you'd be that ballsy robot that stood up there and let the frog shoot the apple off him. You'd be famous. You'd have a excuse bur- me. I am not a robot. Jeez, it's a carapace. Uh, oh, sorry, Bugsy. I have a carapace. I don't know what the fuck you are. <laughs> okay, Gosh, sorry. Thank you. Yes, upset alien. That... Guys, I need your help. <laughs> I have to use my proboscis. Maybe. If you guys can't help me. That's a bad lead. It's a very bad lead, I know. But it's the the closest thing I have to a tongue. And these electrical things hate my carapace. Boy, this is just sounded really bad all of a sudden. Can any of you guys help me punch into this terminal? Existing with claws. I, I will help you. Thank you, giant lizard man. You make me very uncomfortable, which is why I'm helping you. <laughs> I wish you to go away. This conversation, this conversation needs to end now. He just snaps his claws. Oh, sorry, it happens whenever I'm nervous around giant lizards. Maybe that should be your talent, making people uncomfortable. You are good at that. You excel at this. He sits and he thinks about it. He's like... Uncomfortable, eh? Just like that. If you use your proboscis more and your your claws a little okay, bit. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to have you write uncomfortable proboscis. It's all I'm going to have you write. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Which needs to be the name of our ship if we ever have one. <laughs> no, you guys will get a ship, but you have to work for it. Okay, great. Elgar proceeds to type uncomfortable <laughs> proboscis. I would really appreciate that. Period. Did you hit enter? Uncomfortable proboscis. Hit enter. Yeah, I like that. It's kind of mysterious. <laughs> yeah. So when you click... I, I just feel uncomfortable. Oh, typing. it's going to get worse. <laughs> when you click, oh. your hand bumps against his proboscis. Make a fortitude save. Mm. This is taken. Oh my. That turn. <laughs> I don't like this. Um, <laughs> my fortitude. Uh, I think it's plus two. I'm D10. sure you can bump for Boscuses with this man. Well, so. <laughs> what, do, what do I roll for fortitude? 1d20 plus three. Or you can click on the fortitude uh, where it says fortitude. My, my things are not working. Okay, so you got so. 18. Hmm. So, 18. All right. Um,. Neither of you throw up. You because you touch his proboscis. Him because he tasted you. Well, this is going oh, real well. I do feel weird. Can we just leave this person by? I want to know the upset alien's name. What's his name? My name is Boots Rutherford. <laughs> Boots, <laughs> Boots Rutherford. Okay, good. Just it's so I know how to avoid you in oh, the future. Oh man, everyone always says that. <laughs> <laughs> Boots Rutherford makes no friends. Okay. Yeah, we all have our crosses the bear. So anyway, <laughs> I'm going to go talk to Bugsy over here. What's Bugsy up to? I'm moving on from the alien. <laughs> well, Boots, good good luck existing. It's I, I wish Thanks, you luck. guys. <laughs> Goodbye. And then he walks past. He walks past the the to see the guard and into the bus. I step back. Just give him a wide berth as he goes. Please let Boots Rutherford be hit by a bus. <laughs> what? Why, why, why are you guys... He's going to be the character that always almost dies, but you guys are pissed off that never does. <laughs> Damn it, Boots. All right, um, Bugsy is just looking around like, may I help you? Are you Are you staring at me? May I help you? Um, let me speak on behalf of my friend, my amphibious friend here. He appears to be staring off into space. <laughs> Small things kind of freaked me out a little bit, but that's just because of my past. And he takes kind of a shuffle away from Ross. Sorry, small things. Past. Can't be helped. Ah, uh, I understand. Do I make you equally uncomfortable? Yeah, but mainly your smell. Anyway, I've got... Tickets? Do you, do you want guys need to buy some tickets for the, for the bus? What, what what are these tickets for? Oh no, we we've got oh. bus tickets. We're okay. Man. Okay, I I must just be the worst scalper, you know, buying tickets and trying to sell to people that already have tickets. Am I on the wrong side of the door? Yeah, you might try a little further back. God, damn. Yeah. Okay. Um. Like maybe maybe by Borcat's meat cart. That'd be a good place. I did hear that his uh. His cart was recently vacated. Well, actually, he's over there, mm -hmm. and you see he's in the corner with the dentist. Oh, oh that's right. Oh, hello. <laughs> and when he came in, he was talking all about how he was hit in the face with the laser fish. I mean, yeah, he started it, and he knows that, but then a dentist came in, and he's in timeout, and the dentist is making sure he's following through his timeout. Guys, you guys don't want to have a timeout here. This is bad. This is real. He might not survive. Anyway, um. What, what happened? Wait, what'd you ask? Oh, oh, just what happens when you're on timeout? It sounds rather unassuming, but you seem quite scared. The dentist touches you and fills your head with the most horrific things for ten minutes at a time until you kill yourself. So anyway, I really gotta get out of here. Um, I love you. Bye. You're my friends. Uh, and he runs away. Well, Gusty Adams, that Bugby fellow really bonded with us. Said he loved us. Yeah. I also feel uncomfortable after that. <laughs> <laughs> this is just an uncomfortable. This is the most uncomfortable room we've been in. It's, it's I'm almost... kind of afraid to talk to anybody. <laughs> we should. We should probably take our leave. <laughs> 
like now, like not talk to anyone else. <laughs> Hang on, then. <laughs> yeah, we should, let's just let's just get on the bus and sit on the bus for twenty minutes till it leaves. The guard, the guard next to you guys, like I really don't know why you guys didn't just get on the bus. <laughs> That's all right. That's fair. This is a like, the guard is just like, why did you talk to everybody? We did sort of just do like the Final Fantasy thing. Go in and click A on everything. Yeah, yeah I'm in favor of just getting on the bus well, and I, waiting till it I takes had, off. I had a mind to be friendly with people, but I'm realizing that that is a mistake. The last mistake. Friendly leads to uncomfortability. Maybe I just gotta change my mindset. Well, be seeing you. Yeah, bus station. It's been real. All right. Um, you go through the scanner. The guard, the guard lets you through. Um, now the scanner does beep, but it shows guns, armor, uh, any other like kind of violent things, and it it kind of rates you, and it says that you're kind of subpar for being properly armed. But to really cap off the uncomfortable feeling, it rates you like this. It says, ooh. <laughs> well, I mean, it still hurts to have it quantified like that. It, like, gives you a 4 out of 10 each. It makes you feel real uncomfortable. Uh, it's really sort of the uncomfortable cherry on top of the need a more uncomfortable Sunday. <laughs> that whole experience. All right, uh, Boots Rutherford is standing outside. Right, that was going to be the next thing I asked. And he can't get in. <laughs> Shit. Oh. Oh, my God. What do you guys do? He hey, can't, uh... like, do the doors open when we go up to them? The doors Can aren't opening for him. I am, uh... Do they open for us, like, if I walk up to Yeah, him? they open up. Well, Lizard Man, I'd, I'd like to say we learned our lesson. I think it's best if we just just get on, just as if no one else were in this room. But, um, uh, I, I give Boots a sideways glance. Hey, guys, uh, can anyone let me in? The doors won't open for me. Uh, uh... Sorry, I stepped away for a second. What's the, what's the consequences of letting him in? <laughs> we don't know yet. Um, <laughs> prolonged discomfort. <laughs> I shrug and I open the door. All for right. Him. As soon as he walks uh, in, the doors close immediately, chopping off his claws. Oh Jesus! Oh, my God. You have blood splatter like already. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow! And he just goes, "Oh my God! Oh, at least I can grow them back. Okay, it's not that bad." Oh, but it takes a month to grow them back. I don't have claws for my talent. Oh, oh no, I'm going to die. You can still be my target. <laughs> Remember your talent was proboscis, not claws. Proboscis. Thank proboscis and the discomfort it oh, brings. All things being equal, that really is your most defining feature. Okay. I'll just, I just, I'll use my proboscis to open up this door. And what you see oh, is not. Oh, no. <laughs> He's no. dragging it all over the no. door, trying to find a handle. It is going oh. everywhere. He's getting some blood on his proboscis now. It's just not a pretty sight at all. At that moment, the door's open and he falls forward and he bends his proboscis. Oh, oh. so you have to step over him. Yep, so, you gotta step over the wailing monster with the broken proboscis and no hands. Step over him. Can I just just sort of leap up onto the lizard's back real quick? And then I, I I lean I lean in down to him and whisper, This is why my ancestors ate you. <laughs> 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 I do not have any respect for insects. And he frog. cries <laughs> and cries and cries. All right, you made it to the bus. Is he on the bus? Okay, he's on the bus. I was going to, like, <laughs> as a uh, little mix, like, uh, straighten out his proboscis Ew, you're going to touch it? <laughs> oh. uh. Yeah, I already rolled my oh, constitution. Okay, well, <laughs> let's <my> see <laughs> if he also... Oh, man, why are you doing this to me? Well, he's just going to vomit all over. 
for this class. Oh, man. Okay, he rolled a two for four. So you help him out with his proboscis and you don't throw up. <laughs> he, however, throws everything up. And so as soon as you touch the proboscis, on top of his bloody hands, he vomits black goo that smells like rotten eggs on a Thursday morning in March. Okay. Um, so I assume that's on me. <laughs> that was my bad. You had. Yeah, you 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 touched it, <laughs> yeah. so he threw up. Uh, this is why I get for giving a shit. I should have just left with the insult. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you're on the bus. We're really learning how to exist in this world. <laughs> I was trying to get my karma good, but now I decided that bar bad karma all the way. Bad karma all the way. Yeah, this might actually change my life. And so on this bus, uh, you guys get going, you leave the outpost. Um, there's a stewardess, there's a bathroom. It's got weird, bloody footprints, and someone drew a smile in blood is what it looks like. Um, but there's a toilet and a sink, and it doesn't look like it's gross. There's a robot Tron, um, and then there's someone sleeping. Looks like a corpse is not a corpse. There's a literally just a mannequin is sitting in a chair. This is right next to me, okay. <laughs> it is a lifeless mannequin. Um, it is not sentient at all. In the very back is a centaur who had to buy two seats. His name is Gruff Hoof. And <laughs> then there's two humans, Brian and Brian Rietta. Mm. And that's what you see. Brian <laughs> Your descriptions make me want to stay in my seat and not talk to anybody. <laughs> I'm going to embrace this world. I also only have like 10 to 15, 10 to 15 minutes left. Just oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to have my guy check out the bathroom. How All right, bad roll is it? a perception check. Done. Oh, man. That is a really good roll. You're really good at perception. Uh. Yeah, that's the door, so I'm going to move you in. So, oh wait, are you looking in the bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the footprints, clearly someone had blood on their feet, tried to go in the bathroom, um, kind of get the blood off of their boots. <laughs> Looks like they took off their boots, and so their, their bloody socks were on the ground too. Uh, so they got most of the blood mm, off, gross. then they destroyed the toilet, but then they cleaned it up real nice. Um but they did not forget to, fl or they did forget to flush. So you have to deal with that. But there's something curious. This this little bloody red smiley face. It looks like it was corroded into the floor. It looks like it took a long time. Almost like someone took like a some sort of liquid and just did drop by drop, and burned this smiley face into the ground and then slathered it in blood. Uh, that's really the only thing of curiosity about the smiley face well is that the only thing <laughs> yeah all right do, does the <laughs> do the bloody footprints like kind of trail at all towards one of the other passengers at all no or, they just come out and uh, stop are any of the passengers not wearing shoes or socks um, that I can tell? robot tron <laughs> the mannequin and the centaur are not wearing socks Mm. <laughs> all right well huh i guess i just i kind of look at the creepy smiley face and try to clean off the, the proboscis vomit <laughs> from me <laughs> in, in the sink oh wait so, i forgot um, also do. boots rutherford is on the ground and he is not happy i forgot to add him he's right there Oh, he's, he's like in the middle of the eye. No, no, uh, he's just inside. Just, so here's the door <clears throat> on the right there. Boots is just uh, inside. And why is it say bald person? <laughs> <laughs> who, who left that man on the bus? <laughs> to answer your question, like the bloody footprints come out and then there's a bald no, person. No. Do you want to talk to the bald person? He's just like a bald human. No, like his name guy. is bald person. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Do you want to talk to the bald person? Sounds like such a dangerous question <laughs> based on our experiences so far. Is he like Agent 47 <laughs> or something? Like, yeah. he's So he's um, waiting in line. Well, actually, you, you walked past him to get into the bathroom, but he's, he's where people would line up to go to the bathroom. But he just didn't go in. I go clean myself off and then like walk out and say to him, it's all yours. He just says, uh, thanks. Mister, um, do you know anything about these bloody footprints? Uh, looks like 
a real mess in there. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't know. They kind of stop oh next God. to you. Oh my God. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Hey, check out this weird looking Ooh. and you stop hearing him. He stops talking. He does not talk anymore. It's actually really, really, uh, really quiet in there. And the door uh, seems to vibrate slightly. Well, he's gone forever. Well, apparently there's a wormhole on this bus. All right. <laughs> and it as soon but... as as soon as the door stops shaking, what do you do? I open it cautiously. <laughs> All right. <laughs> to peek inside while also holding <laughs> on to something. <laughs> um, you look inside, and he's sitting on the pot, and he's using He's like, hey, some privacy, please. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> go back. <laughs> I go back to my seat. He got you. Too, <laughs> Teach you to inquire. <laughs> Sit in your seat and stay silent. Oh, shut the fuck up! Oh now. my god! <laughs> All right. Oh, hang on. Just the bus, Ross. Nothing more. So long as we make it that way. People just don't finish sentences sometimes. It's not because of any like, big plot. <laughs> sometimes it just happens this way. Sometimes. Just sit your ass down next to that mannequin and don't say a word. The What's only the solution. It was like the mannequin wooden or like... Uh... Yeah, it's a wooden mannequin. Don't ask questions. <laughs> Haven't you learned? <laughs> All right, I'm just I'm gonna just lean up against the mannequin to like use it as a rest. All right, <laughs> um, the second wrong move. So the stewardess, yeah, the stewardess was... walks down, um, <laughs> and just asking if anyone wants anything. That's a juggernaut. It's actually think of like a a half giant. Her her name is Sharon S. Okay. Like. Hi, can I get you anything? Um, do you have any snacks? Uh, yes, we've got um, gargle peanuts, and we also have some acid in a shot glass. <laughs> but if that doesn't go along with your physiology, we have uh, some apples, bananas. We also have some nice little cookies going on in the back. Uh, really, anything kind of like that. Uh, just little sandwiches also, but no, no coffee. Do you, do you have anything live? Any live morsels? Well... Uh, how alive is alive enough for you to be okay with it being alive? Is it still moving? <laughs> mm, uh, yeah, as long as, as long it's still okay, moving. Okay, as long as it's moving. I'll get that for you, sir. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else? Mr. Frog? No, I'm good, man. You look a little <laughs> shaken. Are you okay? Is there anything... Is there trouble somewhere? Oh, you just mind your own business. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Jeez, okay, goodbye. Um, I'll make sure not to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I'm trying to get to this talent show, not some noisy stewardesses. And I, I she goes in the back, around. has a little cry, then quickly comes out. Okay, sorry, uh, sir. Um, what, what may I get you, Mr. Android? of that acid you mentioned. Come and write up. <laughs> and so she goes, she cries some more, obviously. <laughs> of course, I've like wounded her day, ruined her whole day. My sh shitty frog guy. The funny just... thing is she's the only nice person you've actually run into. <laughs> 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 so then she comes out, she's like, okay, come on, Sharon S, you can do this. You can do this. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Android, here's your drink. And Mr. Vesk, um, well, it's a little dehydrated, but it is still moving. And it's just like this little lizard covered in fur that's <laughs> having a really bad day. For a second, I was really worried she was going to go kip up, pick up boots and bring it to her. <laughs> <laughs> you must accept my apologies, Miss Sharoness, but... Of all the living things to offer me, and you offer me a lizard, you must thank me 
a cannibal. Well, I mean, it's covered in fur, so I just thought that it would just, it was kind of only half of your, um, ancestor kind of origin. Um. You do not know me, ma'am, but respectfully, I, I decline. Thank you for the offer. I mean, I can just scrape, I I'll can scrape okay. the scales off, it's no worry. Please, please, oh, okay. say no more words. I'm going. <laughs> I, I I call to Sharon S as she's leaving. Hey, Sharon S. Turns out you can't do this. <laughs> and she just says, Sharon S. He's right. He's right. Okay. And in the back, um, well, she's very quiet in the back. All right, what do you guys do? FYI, this is a four-story bus. Ooh. It is giant. Wow. Listen, you've lured us into traps before with your interesting map. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I worked hard on this. Uh, uh, so are, are, we, are we on the floor one? Yeah, that's why there's a one at the bottom and a one at the top. All right. Every level is just going to be full of the brand list of fucking grotesque. <laughs> I guess I'll... I, I guess I'll go check out All floor right. two. Um, like it. So roll floor roll a sucks. perception <laughs> check, Ross. Roll a perception check. Oh, God. Why? <laughs> this is going to be like nice. 14. All right. Um, you noticed that it's been a while since the bald or since bald man went into the bathroom. Well, you know what? He probably has to have a great diet. Like, I'm not going to. Like, hurry the man along. Okay, so that being said, does anybody investigate the bathroom? All right. I'll okay. just I'll just say I'm already the pervert. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, I'll just lead into Every it. group needs one. <laughs> okay, do you open the um, door? I, yeah, and I open the door and make it like, oh, yeah, sorry, right. I forgot my. You open the door, in there. and there's blood everywhere. There's no body. All the blood is everywhere. <laughs> there's no anything. There's just a pair of pants with some lumps of credit chits. There's so much blood in there. You're worried that maybe there was two bodies of the same person. The toilet's covered. The sink is covered. Everything's covered. The lights are covered. Uh, although not the ceiling, strange enough. Well, I gesture to my comrades. <laughs> You go get a look at this, guys. <laughs> I, and, I shake my head and stay seated. Um, hang on, Ross. So with your perception <laughs> check, you do notice um, the the pants are next to you. Do you do you check the pockets? Of course, All I right. do. You find two credit <laughs> chits that has a maximum of five hundred credits on them. Uh, so a thousand credits, or no, in like total, five? so uh, two fifty each. Oh, okay. Sure. Wow. Okay, interesting. Well, I just scoop that up. I'll wipe the blood off of them, I assume. And uh, uh, can I? I guess I. And Sharon walks over. She's uh, like, "Oh, damn it! Not again!" Ah, all right. Who looked into the smiley face? Oh, no, well, I answered my own question. Never mind. Uh, I hey, uh, Sharon S. I know I was. Oh, giving sorry. You a hard I got other things there, to but... do, hon. I got to clean up this blood. Um, yeah, you should probably do that. No, Sharon, that's not professional. I'm sorry, sir. I was being rude. I, you know what? I've been rude too. Um, you said this has happened before. Uh, yeah, it happens almost every ride. And someone goes in there and they explode. And, and this is just something you expect on well, your, your day to day. So every time I try and cover this blood up, it's it's kind of strange. Uh. No, I don't try to cover it up. I try to clean it up. That's what I try to do. Anyway, when I get it all spick and span, that smiley face is still there, almost like it's burning away into the very reality of, you know, the floor, which for me is a very real thing. You haven't, like, pushed this up to corporate or your higher-ups or something like that? Or, like, even put up a sign that you might explode in the bathroom? Or... <laughs> well, I, it's it's different. I mean... I, you saw a bald person. He was just standing there. I'm like, okay, you can do whatever you want. And he just goes in the bathroom and he explodes. Uh, that's not on me. Why is that my job? I'm here to offer excellent service. If you do exploding on your own time, that's on you. 